What's going on everybody? Seth from Headwaters here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest Creeker from Dagger Kayaks, the all new Code. All right, we'll do a quick overview of the specifications. So this is a large code. I prefer paddling up a size as, as opposed to being kind of on the higher end of the medium. So I'm about six feet and about 185, 190 pounds. Um, so that puts me right on the lower end of the weight capacity for this boat, which uh, bottoms out at 180. So your paddling range is 180 to 260 is what Dagger recommends. The large is nine feet, two inches long. It's uh, 27 inches wide. It weighs 52 pounds, uh, and then the big thing that uh, that caught my eye about this boat is that it has a volume of 97 gallons. Having all that volume, of course, means this is going to be about as well suited of a kayak as you're going to find for a larger paddler. As usual with Dagger boats, you've got the Contour Ergo outfitting, super dialed, really awesome. So, of course, one of the biggest design elements that everybody loves to talk about on whitewater boats these days is rocker, right? It's like if there's two things that I feel like are major focal points on uh, any kind of recent creek boat designs, it seems like there's a ton of focus on volume and on rocker. And I'm going to do this, and I'm going to start trying to do this on all these reviews because I'm going to try and review all of the current creek boats here on this channel. Um, I'm actually literally going to measure uh, the highest point of the bow from the ground. It's also not a perfect process because rotomolding molding itself, there's mild variations in rocker uh, with the cooling process and stuff on individual boats. Also, this boat's been paddled a couple of times, right? So it might vary in measurement of rocker a little bit from a boat that's just been sitting on uh, a shop floor. Uh, but measure this one. So we got 18 and a half inches of rocker. You know, and of course it's great to talk specifications and everything and measure how high the rocker is, but really what it, what it comes down to is, is the functionality of it. And I will say undoubtedly the volume and rocker of this boat, um, yesterday on the river when I was shooting the on water footage for this review, uh, definitely pulled through for me. Uh, and we'll pop that footage up in a minute here and kind of cover what that did. So now let's kind of take a walk over the bottom of the hole, right? Um, so like we just talked about, we've got all that rocker up here. We've got the boat kind of flipped on edge so we can get some good angles. Um, you know, reasonable edge, not too aggressive. Planing hull, which you can kind of see from up here where that rocker kind of just comes and we flatten out. Quite a bit of rocker in the stern as well. So this boat is ready to go on steep terrain. And then we talked about that volume earlier, if I can get this angle pretty well. There's just, the stern on this is just a huge bulb. Uh, there's a ton of volume back here. So that is gonna be really forgiving. You know, if you're worried about getting stood up in a hole that you plug or something, I mean, this thing is, it has really got some volume there to, to pick up some of the slack for you. Uh, what I'm going to do here is kind of run through some footage, kind of talk about how the design of the boat is interacting with myself and with the river. My biggest thing that I noticed initially was just how big this boat felt. There was definitely a little bit of struggle kind of at the beginning of figuring out that feeling of this is kind of a lot of boat. But a little warm up, um, grabbing a few eddies, getting a feel for the edges. I would say the big thing I felt with the edge is that probably has a lot to do with my weight interacting with the volume of the boat. Um, but it did feel like I had to put a lot into the edges to really get them in to engage um, the way that I needed them to. I think a, a heavier paddler who's more in the middle of the weight range or higher end of the weight range wouldn't have that struggle. It'd actually be really fantastic. I think really snappy and responsive. Here we are coming into the log jam rapid which is really the first you know actual rapid of the run kind of the first real strokes of the boat and you can already see just how forgiving it is um, that first little hole it just plowed over with all that rocker and volume the second one's a little more grabby and i've actually been caught in that hole before just briefly um, but it just ran right through it i just wanted to highlight pulling into this particular eddy you can see here 
me kind of still figuring out that how much how much edge it takes to really get that edge to engage when you're turning into an eddy. But this is another highlight of the rocker is you can see there's some gradient there and it just blasts over that thing and comes back into the current like it really wants to go for it. Just this is really where I started figuring this thing out. It's like a test to see how close I could get to this rock and I don't think I could have gotten any closer without actually hitting it. This one I think was a good example. So this was the first time I actually caught an edge. You kind of get my edge caught right there and it was just so easy to recover. The boat is very forgiving. Yeah, I mean that width, it just makes it so stable. So, all right, so here we got the Boulder Rapid. This is one of the, one of the cooler rapids on the run. And uh, this is a rapid that really shows you how, how maneuverable this boat is because uh, you come in and you kind of got to make this move to the left and really keep things under control because there's rocks everywhere and it just plowed right through it. Um, you know, getting caught in this little kind of hole right here was my bad. I peeled into the eddy too early. The maneuvering through that rapid is a tough one. This is, I think, the moment that made me really like this boat. So this rapid, uh, there's kind of a couple of holes in here. I just wasn't expecting the, the last one to be where it was. I thought I was kind of already through everything. Got over the first wave, got over the second hole, and boom, that third hole is kind of the one I wasn't expecting. Man, it, it caught me by surprise, and this is one where I've seen people get stuck in this thing before, and this boat just, all that rocker really pays off right there. It just popped right over that thing and ran right through it like it was nothing. It is nice to have the confidence in the boat to just come cruising through something like that. If you're, uh, if you're on the fence about whether it makes sense to upgrade to one of these more modern boats, if you're paddling something like a Mamba or a Nomad or um, you know, one of those older uh, creek boats that are still totally, they're great boats. Um, but the biggest differentiator I think you're gonna have is when you come up on a spot like that and there's a hole um, to work with, the reaction you're gonna get out of something like the code is going to be entirely different. So this is the last rabbit on the run and they come in the entry. You know, there's not a lot of water to work with here. There are a lot of rocks. So we're getting in here and I felt like this boat was just so nimble for its size. Uh, once I got warmed up with it and see how easily it's just maneuvering through all this. And you can see I'm not doing a lot of paddle work at this point. I kind of just trusted this boat um, with these waves and stuff and coming in to kind of the, the finishing piece. This is another move that requires a pretty solid line and it is just working right through it. And boom, right into this last hole, pops right out. So overall forgiving, but also really fun boat that can be aggressive if you want it to be um, and also can be really forgiving, uh, which I think is kind of kind of a nice balance to be able to sit back and relax and let the boat do the work, but also to be able to take control um, and, and get it to do what you want. Thanks for tuning in to check out the code with us. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you've got any questions about the code or any whitewater boats, kayaking in general, you know, just leave us a comment below. We'll get back to you. Thanks again and happy paddling. Woo! Woo yeah. Wow. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That was spicy. Yo, that was crazy, dude. I came over that thing in that big hole and this thing just was like planed right over it. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks, boat.